Right here we go. Stay. In the outhouse. Uh -huh. The sheep in the outhouse there? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can go. My rain go in my name. <laughs> anyway, so we're looking at Leviticus 23. You are. Mm -hmm. You want to scroll down to where it starts talking about atonement day. You'll see it highlighted in only. It's like that in verse 30 or 20 or something like that. What are they doing in that class? Uh -huh. Oh, eating the toilet paper. All right, I see it. Twenty nine. Go ahead and read that part. For what else? Oh, and they they complain we ain't talking loud enough. I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, yeah, in the last video, they say the birds was drowning us out. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted. In that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So here we are talking about atonement day. So, and what we're trying to do is understand, okay, what is he talking about? Fitting to happen I'm on, on atonement day that these people are going to get cut off. Okay, read the next verse. And whatsoever so it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. So this going on at the same time. Right. These people who are at work are going to get destroyed. And it's a solar flare. So you're putting these puzzle pieces together. How is it that a solar flare is, or whatever it is is coming from the sun? Because that's what it's going to happen. It's coming from the redemption of the sun. How is it going to cause people to perish on that day? I'm going to let you answer because I got an answer and mine ain't going to be nothing like yours, I promise you. You're saying these, these people who who do not afflict their soul and who does uh, does not abstain from work? How? Well, I, more so the work part, but I, I can I can throw the affliction of the soul part in there if you don't do those two things, yeah. If you do, the, if you work or if you don't afflict your soul, yeah. You, 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 can, you, can you see how... how the sun could cause that. Um. Or how it's possible, how that would work. Maybe not the sun caused the affliction of the soul part. That could be a little tough, way too tough. But how could the sun cause everybody who goes to work to die? On that day? Um. Well, definitely from the people outside. You know, those who have who do labor work outside, I can um, you know, I think that's easy to see. But those who are inside, if there is um that if that building has like central air or stuff like that, um like it could cause people who are used to 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 not being in those conditions uh, to like start having heat attacks or no, stuff like that? No, some of our father's people have central air, so they would be in the same situation. I don't think I know. I don't think I, I would know how. It's, it's, and it's tough because we're thinking in one day. Right. What, you know, this one day event, this would have to be a flash that actually knocked people over, like it, you know, fried them mm -hmm. or whatever. But that's not typical of a solar flare. That don't typically happen. Now, you could say um, heart attacks and strokes. That they, they try to do studies on that kind of stuff. I've read um, the abstracts and the conclusions of those studies. And, you know, I didn't agree. I didn't, I don't, I don't see, uh, um, I don't see the correlation. Like they, like they said, it lagged, the study lagged. So that's why, you know, I edited it out of my videos and then, you know. So what, what is your answer as to how the sun can cause these people to die? I don't know either. I don't know. To die. I don't know if it's a one day event, but now if you're talking about the prophetic fulfillment lasting a year, just like, you know, you have what we think is that it could last a whole year. Just like the prophetic fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles could last, will last for seven years. It's going to last for seven years. 
So if the prophetic fulfillment of atonement lasts for a whole year, and what that's saying is that people who go in and out are exposed to the sun daily. You know, they got to do it, got to get out there every day. Okay. The yeah. heat load, the, the, um, not the heat load, but the UVC load on them over the course of that year or years, because it's two years in a row that they ain't supposed to work. I ain't supposed to work. I'm going to go into two and a half years or go to the three years, you know, when you, you know, the, that we're not supposed to be out there and exposed to the sun during the most treacherous time of the sun that we're going to see and so that could be it that these people are exposed to the sun over these long periods of time and then end up with you know something because it you know the, the scripture talks about um um illnesses that will be generated from the sun mm -hmm. and so you you would have these people exposed to the sun like i said over the course of the year because nobody's supposed to be working this year you're talking about working as far as continuous um, throughout the year, or are you, you, you talking about for atonement? Um, no, I'm talking about the whole year. The prophetic fulfillment of atonement, the year starts in the year 2023 and lasts until the year 2025. Nobody's supposed to be working. I mean, you can work a little bit in the in the early parts, you know, of, of, but nobody's supposed to be, because if you think about it, our father's people are supposed to be husbands. Hus hus they're in the husbandry. And so no plowing or tilling of the fields or tilling to the, to the grapes in that time. What is he doing for two years? He's basically, you know, tinkering with his house and his car and his tractor and counting biggies, you know, making sure he's got enough food to last. He's not out there in the sun every day doing his thing, tilling and cultivating and, and you know, and doing it. So he's not working. He's basically, I mean, how much work are you doing this year compared to last year and the year before? Yeah, sometimes I have to try to invent things to do, you know, just because I'm like a busybody, you know, just, but. Always out doing stuff. Yeah, doing stuff, but. And you have your garden. It's definitely, and... I would say it's definitely um, probably where we would say, say if our gardening, you know, took up most of our time, say it was uh, 80% of our time, it wasn't, but it was, I would say it's. I don't know, 40? Because we, we don't really have that garden. The gardening work, the husbandry work, that took up a whole lot of our time. So what about if you have your own uh, business inside of your establishment or your habitation or whatever? Whatever. That's The thing is, my point is, is that the way we were supposed to do things from the beginning and the way we we're going to do things after this power shift is husbandry that shows that our father's people his his men folk are supposed to be husband do you know what a husband is see you know what a husband is i mean i'll try to explain do to i know what a husband or husbandry husband when I, when I say that our main job is husbandry okay what is a husband I don't know if I necessarily know what the definition of husband is. I know what it is of husband. A husband is a, has a, it's a job. A husband is a job. When somebody, say, when somebody say they have a husband, they have a person that takes care of their stuff. Like, for instance, it's her grapes, but her husband is going to be the one to go out and, and take care of the grapes. He's going to take care of the, this. He's going to take care of that. And, and the reason why is because his focus is on a higher plane. His higher, he, he, ain't, he ain't got time to worry about sheep. He ain't got time to worry, just like he ain't got time to worry to pet or to count eggs. You know what I'm saying? He gets the, the he, 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 he purchased the chicken and gives the chickens to her. She says, okay, these are my chickens and she feeds the chickens. But then she has a husband who goes out and mends the fence. He does the this, he does the that, and he takes care of this. He's basically a worker bee who's at the behest of, of the woman. That's what's odd about it, is that he almost literally works for her. What did you just say? At the BS? BS. Oh. Yeah, he does what she said. I thought you said at the BS yeah. of the woman. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm like, I mean, okay. It could be if this, but she don't understand when she's trying to take advantage of the situation. So, so the thing is, <laughs> all of this, you know, we about to stop growing food and I'm going to go get me another job. I'm going to 
be a goldsmith and I'm going to make some gold and then I'm going to sell my gold and I'm going to get me some money. And then I'm going to take that money over here and buy me some food. No, that ain't what, it wasn't no, what nobody's supposed to be. That didn't start until Egypt. That yeah. Was mm-hmm. I was reading, um, reading um, in Genesis. I think it's chapter three, if I'm not mistaken, how it says that the father made man and put him in the garden to take care of it and preserve it. And then it goes on to talk about how, um, you know, what one of man's curses, the curse after he gave the serpent his and Eve hers, he uh, cursed the ground because for man, you know, he cursed the ground and he told the man that he would be um, tilling the ground and eating from the ground, you know, until he, he, he goes back into the ground. So husbandry is definitely, and throughout scripture, you know, the, the people of the father were, um, agricultural people. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, so really nobody's supposed to be out there in the sun. And so the people who are actually going to work this year could be about to catch such a heat load or anything, shopping, whatever it is that's got you going out there when we should be, uh, we should be sabotaging these two years. But, two years. but throughout your um, time on this channel, you've always made the statement um, after you said, you know, things like you just said, that I'm not telling nobody not to get a job, you know, not to quit your job or whatever. Do you still you still stand oh, by no. that? Oh, no. I ain't telling nobody to get one either, though. <laughs> oh, that is, no, um... No, I actually encourage people this year, if somehow you find yourself, um, your employment situation starts to change, I, I would say take the downward path, you know, the way out of it. You know, if you got mm -hmm. a choice, you, you know. Don't go and start looking for another yeah, job. Nah. You know, somebody called, uh, We I think we, we was doing blog talk radio, one lady had called and said, she called and said, would you pray for me to get a you job know, or something said, like that? Said, would you do a reading? You know, uh, you yeah. know, trying to find out what platform to be on under there, the category. And I picked spirituality because I didn't want to pick religion. Right. And the first thing she called is, hey, will you do a reading for me? And I'm like, what kind of reading you want? What book you want? You know, scripture. I read anything from scripture. You know what you want? That's what I'm thinking in my head. I'm like, sure, I read anything. You know, yeah. sure, I may be off topic. Mm -hmm. And then she like, should I get a job? And I'm like, now? You you asking me in twenty twenty three if you, you, you get said a job? no you told him no no he ain't supposed to get no job <laughs> you said I'm gonna pray yeah you basically told him, yeah I'm gonna pray to you you know <laughs> no I'm not not I'm I don't pray. know if you I don't remember if you said no I'm not gonna pray or no I don't think you should get a job right no, now you hung up the phone I pray <laughs> I pray you get that mess out your mind talking about and get a job if he's put you in a position right, right. now where you are living without a job. I mean, that's what COVID was for. I mean, that's what, you know, all of that was for. That's where they shut down the job and they shut down the churches. The only people went back to work and the only people went back to jobs is a different kind of people. Those people are on a whole nother level, you know, aware. and that's going to be the case after this pole shift, too. So that's what you mean when you say take the lower Yeah, uh, on the way out. Don't, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if, you, if, they, if you got a choice between, like you say, looking for another job or being without a job and, and drawing unemployment. Yeah. Or, you know, taking, you know. Going yeah. home and work, go be the babysitter. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, just take a, uh, uh, like you said, you know, go home and take a babysitter. This might be that time where you want, actually wanted to become a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. This might be your opportunity okay. to to be a home mom. Well, I don't, they don't use the word stay-at-home mom anymore. They use um, uh, homemaker. Don't Make get, the home, yeah. Go get your kids out of daycare and go get your What's the name? Hey, I had a daycare, and and and, and y'all go home and play homemakers. We all fun. We all gonna get us some little aprons, and we gonna act like home. We playing homemakers up in here. All the little kids, y'all gonna be out there chopping wood, and all the little girls, y'all be out here making biscuits. Like, we better do this thing. Yeah, because we like play, you, we about to play tribulate. <laughs> go ahead. Like you said, you know, this will ensure that you don't get caught out there. Yeah. So, and I believe that could be. I just don't think it makes sense because one day blasts don't make sense. You know, and there's people talking about this, you know, heart attacks and this, that, and the other. And it is atonement day. Don't get me wrong. 
It is supposed to be a holocaust. There is a lot of people supposed to drop on that day. But the prophetic fulfillment, it could be 24 hours. It could be, you know, 48 hours or, you know, but it could span over the course of, you know, years. Just like, just like the memorial blowing the trumpets, but. This sun, the shining of the sun and, you know, the rays and stuff of the sun, this can happen um, throughout the course of the year. And that doesn't mean that there won't be no winter or all that kind of stuff. It, the seasons will still take place, right? Because I'm thinking about when it says, you know, when the Father says that there will always be fall and winter, summer and spring and stuff like that. So even though it's, it's cold, it's still, the sun can still be doing this damage and stuff, right? Is that right? Oh, the UVC? Yeah. Yeah, give me cold, but... Hmm. The thing about the, the the UVC is it's really only going to take effect after the uh, the solar flare. And, and when I mean solar flare, you got the CME, you got you know, all kinds of solar activity going up there, but everybody knows we're solar flare. So when I say solar flare, I mean all that stuff coming from the sun. One of the things that it can and possibly what it, what the keys that Enoch says is going to do is strip away part of the atmosphere. That's when we're really going to get exposed to the sun is when the atmosphere is not blocking out the rays. Right now, it's blocking out most of them. What do you mean by atmosphere? That those clouds up there, mm -hmm. they um, and even when there's not clouds up there, there's still um, uh, some. Can't remember what, but they, there's still some elements out there, for lack of a better term, between us and the sun that's blocking out the bad part of the sun, mm -hmm. you know, the worst parts of it. And if you strip away any portion of that, it's going to start to increase. And so, whereas we already suffering higher um, UVC levels, if you start to take away part of our atmosphere, those UVC levels are going to go even higher. And, and so that's what it could be talking about. These people are going to be out there at work. You know, after the atmosphere has been stripped away, the atmosphere and I ain't talking about people that's going to work now. It's probably, you know, they'll probably have some mourning. So you and let me start completely making up stuff. So you have uh, part of the atmosphere is stripped away. And but the people say we still got to go to work. Mm -hmm. And so after everything calmed back down. Now they still get up and still go into the day. They got sunglasses on and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that in order to, you know, go to work. And so they end up over time accumulating so much of this okay. killer. UVC is a killer mm -hmm. that it actually starts to damage their cells. Mm -hmm. And like I've said, you know, it appears to me that it, it's like a um, after you realize what's going on, now you got skin cancer to deal with. And mm -hmm. so it, it you know, it still takes you on out. Right. Mm. Unless, of course, you know how to pray or know somebody that knows how to heal your know, cancer or knows, you know, that red clover, you know, kills, you know, whatever, you know. Unless you know something like that, you'll, you know, in other words, you put faith in our fathers one way or the other, it'll just take you on out of here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one yeah. way or the other, you gonna do it. You gonna either you gonna trust our mother, our universal mother, who is right. nature, and you know you put faith in her, you know, or you are gonna put faith in our father and his word. Either way, you know, as long as you trust him, everybody right. calls on the name. But there gonna be those who going you know, somebody right now stocking up on suntan lotion. Like this is all I need, suntan lotion. I just buy by the gallon. It's not anything to say if you survive the that part, something else will get you. Right. And then they say, well, um, and then the same thing is true here. Um, the affliction of the soul, if it's a multi-year event, well, that gives people years to establish themselves as affliction of their soul. I mean, it's not just a one-day thing. You actually take on a lifestyle of charity. And then once, you know, you, I mean, over the course of two years, you're giving, giving, giving. And again, anybody who does not do that, and this is key, if you if they don't give, they're not um, 
killed or cut off. What does it say? Well, no, it does say here that they are cut off. They're not killed, but they're cut off. And you see, okay, okay what does that mean in light of the class that we just did the other day? I know a lot of people didn't watch that class. They only like 8% of the people actually made it to the end of that class. Well, one of the things we talked about was how doing charity changes your ionization, basically makes you a vessel, a conduit for these higher level angels who want to come down and use you to help humanity. In other words, like I said, again, doing charity is the key to all of that we learned. And so right here, what it's saying is that if anybody who don't do charity over the course of these two years is not going to get this ever elevation. And so why everybody else has, has gone on to this higher mansion, this tower, the kingdom of heaven here on earth. We ain't talking about dying and going nowhere. We're talking about the transitioning to this new um, um, frequency that, you know, humanity will, will reside on after the pole shift, after, every, you know, everything switches. These people who don't afflict themselves, that, that do not do this over the course of this period, whether it is one day, whether it is two and a half days, or whether it's two and a half years, what they're saying is they're going to get cut off. They're going to miss out. And so what will what end up happening is they'll find themselves just like the other guy that went to work, you know, basically without angelic protections now, having to learn to fend for themselves. Well, you know, keep on doing more studies on it, but only time will tell. You guys have enjoyed this message and received something from it. We always, um, we always are grateful if you share it, um, especially to those who don't know anything about it. Um, you know, that's a, I guess, coach is at a form of charity sharing the videos and teaching other people um, so that other people can be taught about the things that they know how know what to do. Yeah, there, there are people who watch our channel who can't read. There are people who can't talk. There are people who can't communicate at all, you know, but they can push that share button and paste that thing all over the internet or even their own um, verses, you know, they can paste verses and get the message out that, you know, not only is this thing coming, but our father has a plan and that plan includes charity. That's one thing we got to get out of this. If we don't get in, keep telling you, we got to show love for our brother and literally do something, do it, do stuff. Mm -hmm. um, let me see what, what charity I do today. I said, I'm going to start telling people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, well, some charity that was done to me is for, I don't know what I necessarily done, <laughs> but um, we were out, you know, cleaning the shed today and Clifford brought me a glass of water. I thought that was very nice of him. Okay. Well, that's, 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 that's a good example of what we're talking about. Just stuff like that because you never know, you know, water is so key to man, you never know. So for him to uh, do such that's a good example. All right, y'all, we're starting to get too low, so we can go ahead and close the video. Right? If you got anything out of it, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way, and shalom. Shalom.